Well, I hope I'm on. Had a little difficulty there to start with, but if this is coming through, please uh, leave a comment uh, so I know that the everything's working. <laughs> hey, Larry. Okay, okay. I guess it's I guess it's working out there. Boy, no matter how much you prepare for these things, right at the last minute. Things go screwy. Gray Scale knows what I'm talking about because he does a lot of these. Well, let me take a look at you and, uh, whoa, look at that background back there. That's, that's kind of cool. I'm going to talk to you about this background because it's already in and I know you guys are going to say, hey, it's already in and uh, how do you do that? I'm going to show you what it takes to do that. And let me take a peek at you guys. Here, whoa, <laughs> yeah. Oh, let me now the background on this this guy. Well, first of all, before we talk about that, I'm going to show you the photo. This is the photo I used yeah. well, to uh, uh, to do the. Well, well, Kathy's in the background watching this stuff, and she didn't turn her. I am off, but it's off. Anyway, here's the here's the egret. I've painted this guy several times, and he's really cool. And he is going to be. I'm going to show you today how to paint this guy and what you need to look for when you're doing your painting. Now, I have backgrounds on here, and many backgrounds I do uh, in my floral painting and in my uh, paintings of birds. For years, I used to paint just plain old backgrounds. I'd stick a bird in there on a branch and go, well, there it is. <laughs> but that didn't quite get it. And I started to look at some photos that I have taken and my wife Catherine has taken in uh, Florida. Uh, birds, I'm going to show this to you. And this is what, you see, I'm at, I was at where you're at now with backgrounds. I didn't know how to do abstract. Oh, okay, do an abstract background. Well, how do you do an abstract background? I have no idea, you say. <laughs> Let's take a look at this picture. Let me get in there close. Now, forget the bird. What you're looking at is just the background. And if you squint your eyes, it separates the darks from the lights. There, now let me get in there real close. There is your abstract background. Don't try to make leaves, but just sort of suggest leaves. Look at that. Is that cool? Let me show you another one. Because this is so important. This kickstarts your imagination. It gets, whoop, wrong way. It gets things going. Which way does this go? Oh, oh, he is standing that way. Anyway, look, or is he? Let me go around the other way. No, it's that way. Look at the background. Can you see it? You see all the wonderful colors back there? The branch and the leaves. So you see right there, that's abstract. And all you need to do is copy that. You can use acrylics because they dry nice and fast. So you can get in there and put glazes on. Here's another one. This is the secret to doing these backgrounds. There's another one. I'm trying to get the glare off of there. But there's another one. Now let's go down and look at the bottom. You see how that is? You see the abstract? You think you can do that? I think so. This is what you need. And in your area, I know you're not saying, well, I'm not in Florida. <laughs> you can find places where there's uh, trees and bushes and stuff. Just get in there with your camera. Take pictures, bring them home and print them off. And then paint them. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Look at that, just like that. Would that, that'd be wonderful, just like it is. With that branch going across the top. Super stuff. Now, so no excuses, guys, for not being able to do these wonderful backgrounds because you can do it, but it, you have to feed your imagination. It just doesn't come from wherever. I, again, I used to do just plain backgrounds 
And then I started looking at the backgrounds on these photos and I went, whoa, there, that's the secret. And you need to break down those those darks and lights. And the more you do, the more you'll play with the, that background stuff, and it'll happen for you. It's practice. How do you get to Carnegie Carnegie Hall? Practice, practice, practice. Gary, tell them I'm not able to see the comments on my iPad. Okay. Yeah. Now, if they have any painting questions, be sure to ask them, and I'll answer them. Yeah. Yeah, Kathy just said that. She's on uh, the iPad and uh, she's having trouble getting the comments coming through so she can't see what you guys are, are putting down. So when uh, the, the painting is done and we put this up on Facebook, uh, she'll answer in the comment section uh, all your questions for you. So go ahead and ask and she'll just get to it uh, after it's posted. Let's get into this painting. Let's see what we have. Yeah, da, da, da. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh oh, Alma says, Egrets, I've had a few, but too few to mention. <laughs> Alma lives, I believe, in Florida, and she takes photographs of beautiful birds all the time. Oh, really? Yes. So Kathy says you live in Florida and take pictures of birds all the time. That's good. I'm going to paste, put this up here because I'll be referring to that during your painting. If they miss any of this video, it'll be always be up on your Facebook page and it'll be up on YouTube. Yeah, it's also going to be up on YouTube, Kathy says. And your Facebook page. And, stay up. Yeah, and Facebook. Anyway, you can see I have a pattern started up here, okay? You have to have your reference material right close by. Reference. I know Neil across the street's watching me and Gail, his wife. Neil and Gail Putter. Hey, Neil. I got to tell you guys, uh, Neil's a painter, and when he... Uh, when he does a painting and uh, Gail will give me a call, come on over, she has soup on. And so I trade, she gives me soup and I help Neil with his paintings. And so it's a trade-off, it's the old barter system going there. And it's great, I have all this wonderful soup homemade. that Gail makes, it's homemade, and I help Neil with his paintings. So there you are. <laughs> oh, palette. Let me show you my palette. Boy, there's so much to tell you about here. Let me back up a little bit. I'll show you these colors. I wonder if that'll stay up there. No, it won't. Look at that. Maybe I can get some tape on here. Well, you know, guys, this is live. Things happen. It's not like when I was doing... Kathy and I were doing... PBS Turn it the other way. television. Turn it so the, the part of the no. Let's see if that'll stay there. Okay. Now I want to lower this down. Look at the colors. Woo! Cool. Now you'll notice inside these are the colors right out of the tube. And these are colors broken down with white. Oil paint. And this is oil paint, yeah. I'm going to name these colors, so if you have something to write with, you might want to write them down. Though, This will be on Facebook. It'll be up there for you, and YouTube for you guys to watch anytime you want. But we have black. We have cad yellow, cadmium orange, olive green. I might not use all these colors, but... I like to put them out just in case. Turquoise, sap green, cad red light, and a nice purple, phthalo violet, cobalt blue. Oh, here's a color that's up here. It's called ice blue. Ice blue. Uh, this is cobalt blue, broken down with white. Burnt sienna, broken down with white. Your white is titanium white, which is the white that is has the best covering power, and crimson, and then we're back to black. So I'm going to put this down. 
Oh, the canvas is a 16 by 20, guys. I'm going to come back up here. Corey! <laughs> Corey says, I'll trade Paul, which is her husband, for lessons. <laughs> He's great for landscaping and housework. Corey. They live in New York. Yeah, Corey, shame on you. <laughs> but we'll take you up on it. <laughs> okay, isn't this wonderful, guys? We can, we can talk to people all over the country. Hmm? All over the world. All over the world, yeah. Now, where do you start? I always start right up here in the head. And I'm going to see if I can lower this. I had some sunshine coming in here a little while ago and I lowered it or punched it up higher. But now the sun is gone. All right. I'm going to take some black and I have use paper towels all the time guys paper towels I'm going to take some black and I'm going to try to keep my hand out of here and and the the, the pupil or the eye is, is just a little black there's a lot of stuff going on up here and we're going to talk about all the stuff that it takes to make this happen Mary Jane how you doing Mary Jane and we have a nice dark in here. I can't see all the comments because I can't do both. But every once in a while I'll glance over there and see who's on there. Oh, okay. Let's get... Now, what is the difference? between the haves and the have-nots. You know what it is? It's paying attention to detail. I have a little pointed brush. And by the way, uh, when these paintings are done up here for you, I, I go in and touch them up can't get everything in. I have my hand on here. That's why I use acrylic so this is dry. If I had oil back there, ugh, it wouldn't be good. This is orange with a touch of white. And it's my medium is good old terp. Remember the difference between the haves and the have-nots? is the haves have practiced and pay attention to detail. We're coming on down with that old beak. Let's get a little more orange and cad red light. There's a little warmth in there. Remember, it doesn't take, it doesn't matter how long it takes to do a painting. It's the end result. Who cares how long it takes? I've seen people in classes brag about how fast they got the painting done. And I look at the painting, <laughs> of course I don't say anything, but it's all just cartoony stuff. Because there's no detail in it. They eliminated the detail just to get the painting done. Does that make sense? I don't think so. Crazy. Crazy people. And we're going to bring this up. Remember, good reference. Oh, is my hand in the way? Sorry. Catherine, tell me if my hand's in the way. Uh, just a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. A little bit. You can see above your fingers a little bit. You have to be. 
close up like this, kind of in front of us. No way around it. Yeah, well, there's sometimes there's no way around it. And you'll be posting a still picture of this on Facebook, too. Oh. When it's done. Okay. <laughs> Let's put a little C in a. Still a lot of detail in that beak. There's a lot of orange in that beak. Really hot. You have to watch the temperature of uh, your color. There's warm. And then there's cool, which we'll get into. Hmm. And in a minute, I'll show you what else is so important in doing any bird. Not just this bird. A little more sienna. I can't, I'd only have one camera, so I can't keep going down with the one. So you can see the palette, but I'll name the colors. A little darker in there. What's that? Hope everyone is hearing you. Yeah. Are you hearing me all right out there? Don't forget to turn your your volume up. Yeah, not too bad, not too shabby. Judy Boyd is watching. Amy, Amy, A N N Y. I won't even try to pronounce your last name. Is <laughs> watching. And let's put a little crimson. Notice I'm spending a lot of time in here. There's a little bit of this, this olive green and white, kind of a neat color. Mm -hmm. You gotta love this stuff. You know what the fun part of painting is? Is looking for all that, for all of the little stuff that's in there. And when you discover another little value, oh boy, is that cool. But if you don't know enough to look for it, and you just simply plunk around in here, it's not any fun. And who says painting is supposed to be fun anyway? <laughs> well, there are certain types of paintings, I guess, are that way. Painting, you win a few, you win a battle here, you lose a battle there. That's how it goes. But you end up winning the war. Nobody sees the little battles you lost here and there. Okay. Now I'm going to put in a... I have on my palette I mixed up a black and white made a gray, and then they, into the gray, I put a little cad red light into it, just a touch, and a little purple, just a touch. I'm gonna, and then you, what you wanna do is you take that color and you test it up here to see if that's what you want. You see it? Now we're gonna warm it up a little bit more. I'm going to take a little more cad red light into that mixture. Test it again. You're constantly putting paint on and testing. Now, the gray, as soon as this gray goes on here, guys, you, now it's, you can see it's fairly dry. It's, it's not wet with turp. I'm going to switch brushes. I'm going to pick up this filbert brush. 
Filbert. What are you using for medium when you do use medium? I'm using terp. Okay. So I, you can tell people that that's your medium. Yeah. Now I'm coming around. There's a little opening in there. Now the top of his head, when we get to it, we don't want to round it off because that's what folks do and it gets cartoony. I'll get to that in a minute. Let me come down here. Very dry. Don't put chirp with it just to make your paint flow. You want it dry so it covers. Gets a little warmer in there. See, I want to come down, pick up a little orange and white, work it in. And because we're working dry, it blends beautifully. Did you explain your brushes that you're using? Yeah, this is a filbert. Little sienna, little black. Get a little touch of dark right in there. Sometimes you take your finger and push it around. A little more black. Let's put some black and crimson in there. I want a little dark in there. It's going to look a little too dark, maybe. And then I'm going to clean my brush off, my filbert. Pick up that gray again. There's so many little subtle color changes. And it's those subtle color changes that will drive you nuts. <laughs> now, this won't look like much of anything until our white goes on there. And there it goes, kaboom. So we don't want to get in there with our white just yet. I put just a touch of turp on here. Sometimes you'll scrub. Our orange and white that we had mixed up. And again, because watch the look at the stroke, how it, it's all over the place. I know, takes practice. Guy sent me an email. It was supposed to be a nasty email. He says, well, the reason you can do it because you've been practicing. Yeah, duh. It's a YouTube comment. <laughs> well, that's what it takes. It takes practice to do this stuff. Whether you play the piano or it doesn't matter what you do. Oh, Oh, honey. Practice. Look at that. Look at that little reflected light right there. Orange and white, very dry. Do, 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 do. A little more over here. We're setting it up for the white to go in. We don't want to rush the brush. And you notice how I don't super blend it, but this, this is, is made up of feathers, remember? So we'll get some texture in there. Yeah. Uh, oh, there's white in there. Okay. A lot of times you talk to yourself. <laughs> do, do, do. And a little more of that white, orange. And you have to develop a touch to where you feel the brush running across the surface of the canvas. 
So you're in tune with the canvas. You become one with the canvas. You know, it sounds a little nutty, I guess. Well, that's why artists are a little crazy anyway. A little light right in there. And because it's dry, I'm able to blend, do my thing. Uh, okay. I'm going to get a little white right in there. There's a little separation in there. And I'll go back and reinstate that. Are you watching, Neil? <laughs> Neil's my neighbor across the street. And Gail. Hmm. That looks like it bending in a little bit. Hmm. I'm just looking at it, making sure. Nothing weird going on. I want to get this a little straighter. This is the hard part. The rest of it goes a little faster. Though I don't know that that's important. Now watch what happens. I'm into the titanium white, not zinc. It's titanium. And it's going on very dry, because I want that white. My hand is on the canvas to steady it. Down it comes. It's short little choppy strokes. And it just sort of ties in there. Gonna wipe my brush. And blend this in a little. See how I pull that around? See? There's little half tones. Little half tones that jump around in here. They're elusive little devils. And they'll run from you. And one minute the half tone's there, and the next minute it's gone. <laughs> so you want quality to your work. Go after these half tones you see. Half tones, they're the tones found between the light and the dark. And they really make the painting. People will go, oh, I like that, but they don't know why they like it. They like it because of that detail that's in there. Notice that head is not perfectly round, but it goes this way, a little curve that way, then this way. into my titanium, larger brush. <laughs> Wipe the brush. See how I pat that? Don't use a blender. Blender would do more harm than good.
comes down and then comes back out just a little and then comes back in. Sometimes when you mess up on the outside, it's a little ragged. You will go in with some uh, dark or something to clean that edge up. Yeah, there's no, there's no rushing the brush, guys. You want to do quality stuff? Get some good reference and go for it. I think that, not everybody, but we live in a society of instant this and instant that and instant cheeseburgers and McDonald's and all that stuff. And it seems to get carried over into the painting world. I'm going to use my finger. Whereas taking your time and doing a great job, people will beat a path to your door. That's the people that are interested in this kind of detailed stuff. White again. Sometimes you're just using the edge of the brush. Sometimes the full brush, very dry, flip out. Sometimes you have to let the white set up a little. And then you go back in and hit it. Push down and pull up. I get quiet when I do this stuff. Then it comes down and turns. See, all the information is right here in the in the photo. You just have to learn to see it. Then once you learn to see this wonderful detail, that's when the painting journey starts. That's when you forget about time. Time goes so fast when you're working. If you paint just to do the best job you can possibly do, people will find you. And painting, painting is frustrating, I know. It is. That's why a lot of folk give up. Yeah. Yeah, when I do these birds, they take a lot longer to do than flowers. I've been painting a lot of egrets, not egrets, uh, ravens. Raven, you probably see them on my Facebook page. And I show my work in the gallery here. Every raven I do sells down there at the Sedona Art Studio Art Gallery.
Yeah, a lot of ravens running around here. Flying around. They, uh, in the morning, they're out there. It's more important to get the value right than the color. What does that mean? It means the lightness or the darkness of a color is more important than the color. You can get away with it if you have the right value. You don't have to have the colors right on the nose. Alma, you're right. Take your time. How are we doing? I'm looking at it here. I need your tea. We only have a short amount of time. But now it's much better. Oh, yeah. Well, Catherine and I did TV for how many years? Thir Four years. I hate to think about how long. National PBS TV. Yeah, national. Reached a lot of folks. We only had 26 minutes to finish the painting. Yeah. Only had 26 minutes. But even though I had that short amount of time, I always try to do the best. And if you see our books, You'll see that the paintings in there are pretty good for the amount of time I had and Catherine had. And just think what you guys can do when you have all this time to mess around. Some of those later TV series are on YouTube, tell people. Yeah, some of the, the shows, later. the series are on YouTube. How are we doing? I think it's starting to get that that loving feeling. Remember, we're painting a feeling, not a bird, a feeling. Of course, now this kind of stuff. I mean, you know, I used to travel around giving workshops around the country. And this kind of stuff you can't do with 15, 16 people because it just takes too long. They'd have to, all right, we're signing up for a workshop and it's going to take you two years to get through this. <laughs> and the cost of the workshop is $2,500,000 a piece. Yes. No, this is, this is more, well, it, I do have a DVD, which is great, because you can take your time and not do the whole thing at one time. Tell it's the same pose of the egret on your long play DVD. What's that? It's the same pose of the egret oh, on yeah. long, long play DVD. On my website, JenkinsArtStudio.com. Go to videos and you'll see this same guy. I have in a pretty much the and same pose. Background. Yeah, it's different background. Very, very dry. Look at how I'm just petting this. Remember, it's the quality we're looking for. How do you get it? Take your time. Look for that detail. I know. It's, it's a crossroads you guys come to. Do you want to paint uh, super fast, easy stuff that sort of resembles whatever it is you're painting? <laughs> sort of. Or you want to be the best you can be? How can you be the best 
What does that mean? Huh? It means practice. And I know I keep saying that. It sounds like a broken record. And look for the detail. Neat reference, very important. Very important reference. reference. If you do a painting and it goes down the tubes, who cares? Every painting you do is a learning experience. There's no such thing as doing a painting and going, oh, well, I lost that one. It's a learning thing. You learn, you learn, you learn. Even this guy could be done on a little 8x10 where you would just have the, the top of the bird. Oh, look at that. This is the fun part. <laughs> a little orange in there kind of makes it glow a little. Orange. Very dry. I push down to get the paint out of there. And now the stroke is going to go this way. I'm not going to come down too far with this light because we're going to hit what we call a half tone. I want to repeat that light up here. Yet it's soft. You see these two values? They're almost the same. So you don't have a hard line. Hmm. <laughs> I'm going to come right out here with a feather. Push down, get that paint out. See how it cuts across? That light we can use as a gauge as to how light we need to make that top. Boom. Look at that. Boom. Put it in. I love that curve back there that just brings us around and then it catches a light right there. Look for this stuff. It'll really turn you on. It really will change your painting experience from being too concerned about which brush. So, you know, brushes and paint are important. But don't let it take over your life. There's a lot of people out there that teach and then they all they want you to do is buy their stuff. I'm gonna come up here. And Catherine and I spent several years over in the in Berlin. Germany, teaching for our TV producers, Frank and uh, Farby Flora. Flora, yeah. And they still teach the certification classes. Yeah, Frank still teaches in Berlin. Uh, they teach our certification. Certification classes. You might want to check that out, Farby Flora. Okay, let me see. Oh, I'm in my gray again. Test, testing my gray. Now the gray, you can see on, on the picture over there, it's sort of a warm gray. You know, I'm not going to spend a lot of time trying to match it perfect. 
because nobody sees the picture that I'm working from. Oh, that's pretty close. And it's dry. The secret is dry. Now these values here and here are very close. This is warm because it has a little orange. This is cool because it's a gray tone. So you have the warm and cool working for you. It's wonderful. I really would like to get a bunch of people out there that want to do this, want to learn to do this. Don't paint for money. You paint for money, you ain't gonna, you're not, you're not gonna get it. Money will come to you. Oh yes, bunches will come to you if you learn to do this stuff. It's not just me. Hey, <laughs> I'm just one guy. Artists from all walks of life think the same way. It's a, it's a giant fraternity out there. I don't know if many, many, many I'm putting a little more orange with the gray. I don't know if many uh, teachers even talk about this stuff. I think mainly because of the majority of the public, <laughs> they don't have time to do this. They want to get right, do something that looks like something, and they're happy. Well, that's okay. But the other folks out there that come to our classes here, our, uh, our classes where we have four or five people, we even have some folks coming for one-on-one. -on -one. They're people that want to learn. Look at that. You can see the softness we're getting. It's not hard looking. That's because the values are close together. <laughs> now we're going to hit a dark. How do we do it? Ooh, this is going to be a long one. <laughs> huh? It can be long. People are going to get bored. I don't think so. A little warmth going in there. Thank you, Tracy Jones, for your nice comment. Tracy lives in the Carolinas now. In the Carolinas? She was in one of our classes at Gandalfos. Oh. She did the big, my big red parrot. Oh. Hmm, this is coming out better than I thought. <laughs> you never know. Now, there is a shadow area down below. So we're going to get that going. Yeah, again, I have to tell you many years, I did all these simple backgrounds and didn't do all this stuff. Let me take this off for a minute, and you can see how he's working with that background. See it? And we'll have some limbs and things in there, but now you can see the white. The reason for the white is to balance the white off here. Oh, look at that. We got some of those things in there. But look at the photo. They're in there too. <laughs> Yeah, you think I'm some genius? I don't think so. I just got it from the photos. Learn to see. Let's put it, how do you do these little things? Just for a second to get off the birdie. White, maybe a touch of blue. Put that in, like that. Got to wipe my finger. Push down and then take it on out. Keep, keep coming out, out, out. 
There it is. And if you wanted a little more sparkle to your little guys that you put in, just put a little. That doesn't show too much. A little dot right here, maybe a dot there, maybe. Oh. <laughs> Kathy said, hey, you got three in a row. What is that? What is that about? How can you have three in a row? Is that better? Oh yeah, I, I do a lot of stuff in the background. But the little little circles back there add a nice light, a nice touch, nice glow to the background. Woo! <laughs> we do have another brush. That's called a liner brush, or what else? I go by all kinds of names. Rigger. Signature. And we're going to just take this. And bring some of these out. That's the detail I'm telling you about. There's so many folks that we just, I'm going to put some turp on here because it has to be like ink consistency. To get this in there. And you want to keep it soft. Use your finger to soften that in. So when you put this in, you'll see the back side gets hard looking. So there is, you can use a, a small blender here. There, and that just pushes it right in there. You see how I push down and pull up? Try to get your whole arm going in. And then we'll soften it because you don't want it too hard looking. Looking at that eye up there might be uh, a little on the large side. Kind of cut it back a little. Now, when this needs to set up, there's still more stuff to do in there. Yeah. Start talking to yourself, and then you answer. Yeah. There. Look at the beautiful rhythm how it comes up. This is what I love about this photo. It comes up, down, around, and down, where it's going to hit its legs and all kinds of stuff. Oh, yeah. As the white dries, we put more in. Some, notice I'm working that brush so we get those subtle things happening in here. Now I'm going to take my gray, black and white gray with a little touch of 
orange and maybe a little touch of purple and let's see we're gonna get more of this in here not too dark you have to watch your grays some folks play around with gray and it's too dark and it weighs the the poor guy down Little stuff happening in here. But you have to get that gray underpainting in there. Maybe I'm going to lower this down. There. Whoop. Cool. Sienna. 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 Sienna with white. Let's try a little in here. There's a little dark right here. Not too dark. Maybe a little more sienna. Very dry. Do, 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 do. A lot of folks out there watching Wayne Coley and Judy Whitman. Thanks for watching. Sometimes I never know if anybody's out there. I could just be here painting by myself. <laughs> well, when you're a painter, you're going to be your own worst critic. And you have to be. Because you'll always find people that go, Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, you're so talented. You know, you have to watch out for that stuff. I plan on doing a lot more live streaming. So you guys can look forward to more of this stuff. <laughs> I'll probably get back into the flowers more. But then again, I, I get a kick out of doing this stuff too. Mm-hmm. In here, a lot of it is faked in. Because if you go in and show a lot of feathers, it gets too hard looking. It loses its softness. Now I'm going to go in and just blend. Hit the whole thing. Push it all black in there. There's still feathers. Still a feeling of feathers. Oh, this one goes down a little lower. So many subtle things. Little detail down here now where you have to show this part of the body coming across. And then it comes down like that. And then I'm going to pick up some more white. Really hit it in there. Make it glow. We always push our whites. With it's in the same thing in floral painting. You push, you push, you push. You're always working on the edge of disaster anyway. 
and you keep working closer to that edge and a lot of times what happens <laughs> you fall over and then you pick yourself up and get back in the race that's what you do people that paint that have reached a certain degree of Oh, what do you call it? Maybe a certain degree of, uh, of quality in their work have paid their dues. And how do you pay your dues? You practice. <laughs> Jeez. And over here, there's some lights hitting. Just on a pedal, you would find little lights that, that dance from pedal to pedal. No, flower to flower, uh, to feather to feather. Oh, feather. oh, petals. No petals. In, on, in flower painting, light will dance from petal to petal. And, and even in this, it's the same thing. It's feathers. What did I say, the wrong thing? Petals. Oh. <laughs> Oh well, I'm old. <laughs> I'm an old guy. Corey, I know you're watching out there. You're still there. You need to come back out here, Corey. Kohanic. Even if it's just for a visit. You did some good stuff. I hope you're still painting. <laughs> Are we looking good? This is going to need some touching up in places after. Because I won't be able to get it all in. Now, we're going to put his little legs in there. Give him a reason for standing around there. And this black, and we're going to put it straight black. And you bring it all the way up. And then we'll bring some feathers over the top. Don't forget the long tail feathers coming out. Mm. Yeah, it's Catherine says. That, yeah, I'm going to put long tail feathers. Now, I painted this painting before. Let me show it to you. We get the. You see the tail feathers? I'm going to sh put those in. I'll show you how to do that. This painting sold in a gallery. But then it's the same bird. But the background is a little different. Yeah, more drippies, more stuff. <laughs> too much fun. You're having too much fun. You know, you strive for years paint to do something that has some credibility that could hang in, a, in a, a gallery. I don't mean a gift shop, I mean a gallery. And you have other folks in that gallery that are excellent painters hanging next to you. God, what a good feeling that is. Yeah. And I've won my share of blue ribbons. <laughs> I 
I used to belong to an art gallery, and if I didn't win something, I threatened to bring my own, my own blue ribbon and put it on my work. All right, you're not going to give it to me. I'll bring my own. Art club, yeah. Well, now you see, well, this is good for you to know. You notice that leg I just put in, how it's bent. Let me come down a little lower here. See how it's bent? Well, their legs aren't bent. They're straight. I'm going to take some turp on a towel. Because the background's dry, remember. Oh no! He just messed up his background. Spread it around. Yeah, that's cool. Now let's put that. See? Don't settle for anything that isn't right. And we're gonna come down straight. That's better. There's another leg that well. I did have a pattern on here, and it went bye-bye because I took it out. Okay, and there's a little bit of this back leg showing right here. Maybe it's longer. Is straight black. Now he has a reason for standing there. Oh, I took out my pattern. He had some. Oh my God, I have to draw? Somebody help me. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, you missed the beginning. It'll be on Facebook. We'll keep it. We're going to keep it up there. And YouTube. And YouTube. So don't worry about it. You need to lower your camera a little. Working down there. Thank you. His feet are just kind of hanging around now until we get something, some, a branch going through there. Now on top, with those feathers coming in there, we're going to bring those feathers over. Just a hint. Don't make a big deal of it. And maybe a little darker. See, and not. Just hide them in there. So it looks like the feet go behind the feathers. All right, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at it, seeing what it needs. There's a little reflected light right here. Am I off? Oh, thank you. And you're wondering, hey, what are you doing? I can't see you. What are you doing? Right. And here is reflected light. This is what I mean about little stuff. You see how it turns that cheek? Take a little dark back in here. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Let me back up here and see what we got. What do you think, Catherine? Not too bad? Mm hmm? Hmm? Yeah. There's more to do to this guy in here but uh but it's okay for now but uh after i'm finished i'll probably do more see this is fuzzing out down here put this over here 
<laughs> or I could look at my this other picture I have. Branches. Woo wee. Let's take some some sienna. I have any? No, I don't have any. Oh, here it is, sienna. I'm going to put a branch in. So he's sitting on something. Neil, are you still there? <laughs> Gail, Neil, you haven't given up on me, I hope. Judy Fernandez. Been a long time, Judy, huh? Judy used to take classes from us when we uh, worked in uh, Carson City, Nevada. Branch that comes right through here. Hmm. Sienna and black. And we're just going to take my finger and just kind of lose it out the side. And down here, sienna and black. Very dry, guys. Uh, it just disappears out there. Using the side of a filbert. Now pay attention to this stuff. See how it tapers? Get down a little lower here. And I have many photographs of leaves and twigs and stuff that I can use as reference. Don't make the mistake of getting too much going. We do have some leaves to put in. Many a painting has been lost because the painter put too much stuff in it. This twig is there for a reason. Because it brings the eye back to the bird. Composition. Do, do, do. Here's something that's different. A knife. Orange. Red. Cat red light. Orange. Very dry. My hand. Well, let me try to do it this way. Aha. Yes. A knife will give you a stroke that's different. My daughter Heather is an artist in uh, San Diego, California. And she does racehorses and mermaids and everything. She paints in the lobby of the Hilton Hotel and does very well because her paintings are three, four thousand, five thousand. Hmm? More than that. More than that. Kathy says more than that. I'm wondering, I see this guy, it's in the photo, it shows it behind that. I'm not sure. I see it. Could you, let me show this to you guys. You see where it's behind? But I'm not sure that works here. 
so if it doesn't what they call read if it doesn't read right then you need to do something one of them can go behind that's better that's better and the other one is also behind but I'm going to probably bring that one out so it looks like he's grabbing hold of that branch they have really long whatever those things are beats toes that come out oh we have feathers to put in one of the problems with a painting is knowing when to stop and the problem is we always think a little more is going to be better and it takes us right down the toilet <laughs> so oh, more paper towel I bet that was loud we're going to put some feathers this is why you uh, acrylic backgrounds are great Sound like Aria is ready for a wine. <laughs> yep. Who's saying that? Patricia. Yeah, I am. Let's take some white. Uh, ink. Consistency. Boom. And he's going first. Do, 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 do. And they're quite long. And then we're going to go like this. Aha, you thought we were finished. It ain't over till it's over. Now, if your paint starts to drag, put a little more turp with it. And in it goes. Take your time. Because if you mess up with this, the whole painting goes down the tube. Yeah. And they sort of curve a little bit on the end. And they come together quite a bit right here where it enters the body. Some of them you just barely, let's see whole armies in, you barely see them. So I'm going to take my blender, if they get too hard looking. Aha. Thank heaven for blenders. Hmm. Well, 
who's on here? Oh, Shanae. Is that how you pronounce her name? Mm -hmm. Shanae. Still have my egret we painted in Germany. Yay. Ray Riley. Oh, hi, Shanae. <laughs> now we got people talking back and forth on the, on the, on the show. Well, we got to put some leaves in now. Don't get weird at the end here. Leaves. Let's take a look. Let's, oh, let's, <laughs> let's do something. Sienna, orange. I have a little piece of that wood come up there. And comes out. Now let's try this olive green. I haven't used that in a long time. Whoa. Okay, slow down. How did you do that? Straight in and then turn and then wiggle a little bit and then back. Huh? Filbert. Oh, helicopter going over. I'm going to come up on there. Yeah. I put a little crimson with that green. And don't line them all up. Do, do, do. Oh, where are all my pictures? I see them. I'm going to put a few more in. This is olive green and alizarin crimson. Push down to the heel heads. I'm going to lower this camera down. You could even put some wildflowers, uh, very subtle, if you wanted. Maybe not. Who knows? Till you try. And oh, let's take crimson. This is where you play. Cad red light, crimson. Where's my cad red? There's not in there. I'm gonna pick up some cad red light. There. Yes. If you didn't like your feet, you could always just put a leaf over it. <laughs> yeah, there's the red. Leaves aren't just green. Change the composition on those ones on the right. What's that? The two big ones on the right. These? It's not? Mm hmm. Hmm. Just too like a fork coming out like that. Too forky? Yes. Maybe they need to be larger? Curve. Maybe coming over this sort of curve. All right, if it doesn't work, it's your fault. <laughs> Kathy says the leaves over here look a little crummy. Composition. That's better. I know. Uh, 
Ending a painting is a bummer. Many times in ending a painting, you just have to, you have to go for it. Especially on the left, where you see all those stems coming out. It's, it's a little wormy. What do you do? Now you have a glass of wine. <laughs> Dakota Rose is watching. Linda Camarillo. Big brush. Now, this is going to be a little strange. This is what you do to finish up these things. Black, crimson. It's going to be really darker than the rest because it's oil. The other stuff in here will match this dark when it's varnished. Now you're going, oh, what are you doing? I wish I knew. I'm going to let some jerpies come in. Oh, honey. Well, you want to get brave? You want to be a painter? You want to do stuff that not everybody's doing? Do it. Go for it. Let it happen. This is just turp. Black. Somebody help me. <laughs> Robert Warren. Hey, Robert. One of the last of the best teachers out there, Robert Warren. You guys. I thought, wasn't, aren't you in Vegas? No? Not yet. Not yet. Look him up in Vegas. He's the greatest. Not many of us left, Robert. Here I'm playing. You do it. Some of it works, some of it doesn't. You keep messing with it. Yes, things will happen. Yeah, things will happen. It could be crappy. But we keep playing and keep doing. I like that shot. Kind of goes with the uh, bird's beak. The last thing you do is the first thing people see when you're painting. Play it safe? No, not for me. Push that brush around. Make it happen. What do people love about these things? <clears throat> it's not just the bird. You know, you can do a bird painting and okay, there you have a nice bird against the background. <sighs> Boring. 
until you learn to play like this, you're never going to be doing anything worthwhile, fulfilling, yes. You look at this the next day, you'll, you'll say, oh, who painted that? That's because you're, you're painting outside of your comfort zone. Now look at this effect we're getting here. Now as this dries, it'll get little things in it. It also lets this uh, branch disappear into nothing. And while it's wet, we might put another one here. <laughs> oh no, he's ruining it. Maybe. You never know. But if I do ruin it, I'll go down with a smile on my face. Mm-hmm. Still playing over here. A feeling of leaves just drifting off into nothing. So the eye will not stay where there's nothing to look at. The eye will always go to the bird because that's your center of interest up there. Now this is going to be up on Facebook, YouTube. Hey gal. Uh, for you guys to refer to, there's a lot of good stuff in here. A lot of good learning. And the best part of it, it's free. Yeah. Leave it simple. I'll probably do a little more to this. Tweak it here and there. White in here. Using, here's a, this is interesting if you guys are still there and haven't gone to sleep. <laughs> And put a little white in there and a lot of turp and we're gonna let that run to balance out the white of the bird. This is still painting itself guys. We won't know what we have until it is it dries up. So this is as much a background painting as it is anything else. But what sells these paintings again, it's the background. Anybody can paint a bird. Hmm. Painted right off here. Dearly there. Ooh. A little too light with those. Well, I'll work on this a little more. I'll have my glass of wine. <laughs> and maybe Gail it will fix me some soup. <laughs> Gail's my neighbor and Neil across the street. Okay, now we're gonna let that rest there for a while. And I am, I've got notes here Catherine gave me. 
which I will read to you. Okay. Well, Kathy will answer any questions in the comment section after the stream is over. Visit our website, www.jenkinsartstudio.com, for books, videos, packets, and online course and seminar schedule. We also teach private classes, by the way, so you might want to uh, give us a call about that. It, there's information on our website. Uh, let's, what else do we have? Oh, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. It makes me look good when you guys uh, subscribe. Catherine is also on YouTube. We're going to, again, keep this on my Facebook page. And Kathy will be answering questions. Oh, also, we have painting packets and videos at www.artapprenticeonline.com. Yeah, yeah, you can get these because we don't ship overseas. So you can go to Art Apprentice Online. Uh, what is it again? Artapprenticeonline.com and you can download uh, videos. Oh, we just put Kathy's rooster up there, which is you can download, and my owl. And just keep checking our Facebook page for all upcoming news and new paintings and all kinds of goodies. Oh, well, there you are. Let me take a peek at you all out there. <laughs> we made it through, but again, I'm going to touch this guy up because there's some folks out there that might be interested in uh, purchasing this little guy here I just did, but I'll be working on him to tweak him here and there. And it's still running on the bottom that I put these leaves in. So we'll see uh, how that progresses. It's still being born. Even as I'm talking to you, the bottom part is still painting itself. <laughs> how good is that? Okay, guys. Well, it was fun. Uh, we, we got a lot done. Uh, the birdie looks pretty good up there. And don't forget out there, here's something I used to say, don't forget to smell the roses along the way. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.